in writing because when you read the writings of Paul, you will see how beautiful and eloquent they are put together in those uh, uh, gospels that he wrote. Uh, though born in Tarsus, he must have been brought up in Jerusalem. And I'll explain to you why. Because as a, a little boy, the Bible tells us that uh, he learned at the feet of of Gamaliel. And, and this was just no ordinary man. He was located in Jerusalem. And so, as a little boy, his parents must have noticed that Paul had extreme talents or they wanted him to be uh, talented in his life. And so they took him to a man that had the greatest educator at that time. And Paul, who was to resist so stoutly the usurpations of the law, had for his teacher one of the most eminent and powerful of all doctors of the law. There was no one more greater than this man when it came to the teachings of the law. And, and so Paul was receiving the very best. And it was during this time in being a young man that, that the explosion of the church began to happen in Acts 7 and 58 kind of covers it. And, and what, what happened from this point on would be a very, very foundational uh, uh, clue as to what God truly wants from you and I when He says, I want to change you. Yes. You see, Saul, at a very young age, embarked on following and persecuting the believers of Jesus Christ. The Bible says even unto strange cities, Saul, our text reveals, breathed out threatenings and slaughter to any and all disciples of Jesus Christ. He was also the man, the Bible says, that was consenting unto the stoning of the disciple Stephen. So when his thoughts turned to the assault of Damascus, it seemed only a natural inclination for this man who had such a hatred for the children of Israel and the church of Jesus Christ. But it's what befell Saul as he journeyed to Damascus that I've come to expound on this morning. Its relevance is without question the starting point to our preparation for Miracle Month. I believe that God is going to use those of you that are preparing yourselves for what He is going to do beginning next Sunday. And I want to tell you, you need to get yourselves on that sheet out there. And I will say it this way, if you are in this leadership team of mine and your name is not on there, you will not be on my leadership team through this entire process. If you are on this platform and your name is not on that fast and that prayer shift, I'm going to tell you, you will not be on this platform for the next 40 days because I want to be hand in hand with a mighty people in one mind and one accord. That is why God has brought forth. That is why He is pulling us together. He said, I want you to go and tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. up in my room, praying unto God like I've never prayed. 
And I sought God like I've never sought Him. And I'm seeking God in ways that I've never seen Him. But I want to tell you, He's revealing things to me and showing me things that I've never seen before. And I want you to know, it's not just reserved for me. God is trying to work in some of you. And He wants you to know that He can do great things through you too. Family members can be saved still. He'll be still around. transformation of Saul of Tarsus to the Apostle Paul take notice all took place in the space of three days he went from breathing out threatenings and chasing people and consenting to killing people to being baptized, the Bible says. That scripture says, and when he received his sight on that third day, he arose and was baptized. Now, I don't know what, what all happened. It said that he was going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And so I tend to believe that he was filled with God's presence and the revelatory spirit of God said, get yourself down to the water because except the man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot get into the kingdom of God. And Paul, Paul, you're one man that I want to have there because I've got a lot of suffering that you're going to go through. But I want you to know I am with you always. Yes. Three days. A total makeover. There's something about those three day transformations in the Bible. We know one who was buried in a cave and in three days he arose. That's the greatest one that we really turn to. But I want to tell you about another one by the name of uh, uh, Jonah. And Jonah had a little three day experience uh, in the valley of a whale. Can I tell somebody? But on the third day, the light came on and the scales fell off and, and uh, Because Saul had an eye-opening experience. And because 